an elementary course in synthetic projective geometry by Derek Norman Lamer. Chapter 2 continued Relations between fundamental forms in one to one correspondence with each other. Section 31 Importance of the notion of four harmonic points. Section 32 Projective invariance of four harmonic points. Section 33 Four harmonic lines. Section 34 Four harmonic planes. Section 35 Summary of results. Section 36 Definition of projectivity. Section 37 Correspondence between harmonic conjugates. Section 38 Separation of harmonic conjugates. Section 39 Harmonic conjugate of the point at infinity. Section 31 Importance of the notion. The importance of the notion of four harmonic points lies in the fact that it is a relation which is carried over from four points in a point row U to the four points that correspond to them in any point row U prime perspective to U. To prove this statement, we construct a quadrangle KLMN such that KL and MN pass through A, KN and LM through C, LN through B, and KM through D. Now take any point S not in the plane of the quadrangle and construct the planes determined by S and all the seven lines of the figure. Cut across this set of planes by another plane not passing through S. This plane cuts out on the set of seven planes another quadrangle which determines four new harmonic points A prime B prime C prime D prime on the lines joining S to A B C D. But S may be taken as any point, since the original quadrangle may be taken in any plane through A, B, C, and D. And further, the points A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime are the intersection of SA, SB, SC, SD by any line. We have, then, the remarkable theorem. Section 32. If any point is joined to four harmonic points and the four lines thus obtained are cut by any fifth the four points of intersection are again harmonic. Section 33. Four harmonic lines. We are now able to extend the notion of harmonic elements to pencils of rays, and indeed to axial pencils. For if we define four harmonic rays as four rays which pass through a point and which pass one through each of four harmonic points, we have the theorem. Four harmonic lines are cut by any transversal in four harmonic points. Section 34. Four harmonic planes. We also define four harmonic planes as four planes through a line which pass one through each of four harmonic points, and we may show that four harmonic planes are cut by any plane not passing through their common line in four harmonic lines, and also by any line in four harmonic points. For let the planes alpha, beta, gamma, delta, which all pass through the line G, pass also through the four harmonic points A, B, C, D, so that alpha passes through A, etc. Then it is clear that any plane pi through A, B, C, D will cut out four harmonic lines from the four planes, for they are lines through the intersection P of G with the plane pi and they pass through the given harmonic points A, B, C, D. Any other plane, sigma, cuts G in a point S and cuts alpha, beta, gamma, delta in four lines that meet pi in four points, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, lying on P, A, P, B, P, C, and E, D, respectively, and are thus four harmonic lines. Further, any ray cuts alpha, beta, gamma, delta in four harmonic points, since any plane through the ray gives four harmonic lines of intersection. Section 35. These results may be put together as follows. Given any two assemblages of points, rays, or planes perspectively related to each other, four harmonic elements of one must correspond to four elements of the other, which are likewise harmonic. If now two forms are perspectively related to a third, any four harmonic elements of one must correspond to four harmonic elements of the other. We take this as our definition of projective correspondence and say, Section 36. 
definition of projectivity. Two fundamental forms are projectively related to each other when a one-to-one -one correspondence exists between the elements of the two and when four harmonic elements of one correspond to four harmonic elements of the other. Section 37. Correspondence between harmonic conjugates. Given four harmonic points, A, B, C, D, if we fix A and C, then B and D vary together in a way that should be thoroughly understood. To get a clear conception of their relative motion, we may fix the points L and M of the quadrangle K, L, M, N, figure 6. Then, as B describes the point row AC and the point N describes the point row AM perspective to it, Projecting N again from C, we get a point row K on AL perspective to the point row N, and thus projective to the point row B. Project the point row K from M, and we get a point row D on AC again, which is projective to the point row B. For every point B, we have thus one and only one point D, and conversely. In other words, we have set up a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points of a single point row, which is also a projective correspondence, because four harmonic points B correspond to four harmonic points D. We may note also that the correspondence is here characterized by a feature which does not always appear in projective correspondences, Namely, the same process that carries 1 from B to D will carry 1 back from D to B again. This special property will receive further study in the chapter on involution. Section 38. It is seen that as B approaches A, D also approaches A. As B moves from A toward C, D moves from A in the opposite direction, passing through the point at infinity on the line AC and returns on the other side to meet B at C again. In other words, as B transverses AC, D transverses the rest of the line from A to C through infinity. In all positions of B, except at A or C, B and D are separated from each other by A and C. Section 39. Harmonic Conjugate of the Point at Infinity it is natural to inquire what position of B corresponds to the infinitely distant point of D. We have proved, section 27, that the particular quadrangle KLMN employed is of no consequence. We shall therefore avail ourselves of one that lends itself most readily to the solution of the problem. We choose the point L so that the triangle ALC is isosceles, figure 7. Since D is supposed to be at infinity, the line KM is parallel to AC. Therefore, the triangles KAC and MAC are equal, and the triangle ANC is also isosceles. The triangles CNL and ANL are therefore equal, and the line LB bisects the angle ALC. B is therefore the middle point of AC, and we have the theorem. The harmonic conjugate of the middle point of AC is at infinity. An elementary course in synthetic projective geometry. This book was written by Derek Norman Lamer, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, University of California. It was published by Gin and Company, Boston, 1917, and is now in the public domain. The text is available for free download at Project Gutenberg, read by Jim Renholt. Programming and illustrations by Jim Renholt, 2020. Corrections and comments are appreciated. Thank you for listening.